One of the evaluation tools that we have available to us is ROI, return on investment. Let's look at the overall formula here. It's not a complicated formula. Income before interest and taxes, so we call that net operating income. Think about that as your daily, your day to day profit, okay? So the profit from operating your business divided by your average operating assets. And those average operating assets, these are the productive assets that you use to run your business. Things like cash, accounts receivable, inventory, property, plant, and equipment, which is just a fancy or complicated term for fixed assets. So things like buildings and equipment uh, and other productive assets that we would use in the business. As I look at this formula, what I'm basically seeing is what income are we generating relative to our investment in the infrastructure that's required to generate that income. Now, one thing I want to point out is this. Anytime we deal with an average, a simple way to do the calculation is simply to say beginning plus ending balance divided by two. So as you're looking at an average for operating assets, I would say just look at what your beginning operating assets are. Look at what your ending operating assets are, add them up, divide by two, you get the average. The overall formula for ROI, net operating income divided by average operating assets, can actually be expressed this way if we look at margin and turnover. So margin, net profit margin, um, or gross profit margin, you guys already probably know that gross profit margin is gross profit divided by sales revenue. Net profit margin is your bottom line net income divided by sales revenue. So your margin is simply your operating income divided by sales, often expressed as a percentage. Turnover, turn, turnover looks at this and it says, what kind of sales, what kind of sales activity did we generate based upon the infrastructure or the assets that we have? So turnover is really an activity ratio. Now, the reason I like to combine turnover with margin is that turnover higher is considered better. So a higher turnover ratio is considered more favorable for a company, but you've got to consider whether those sales revenue dollars are profitable or not. It's only better turnover if the sales are profitable. If you're selling your product at a loss, if you're generating a loss, then a higher turnover ratio will just help you dig the company's grave more quickly. Okay, that's why it's more powerful to take the margin over here, which does include a measure of profitability with net income, and multiply that by the turnover. And what this really does is it allows us to measure that sales activity and include a profit component. And if you really look at this, if you, if you take margin multiplied by turnover, what you're effectively doing is you're canceling out the sales in this denominator and the sales in this numerator. And at the end of the day, you've got net operating income divided by average operating assets, which is exactly what you have in this formula right here. So whether you calculate it using this formula, whether you prefer to figure out margin and then separately figure out turnover and multiply those, Either way, you're going to get to ROI. And for sure, with ROI, bigger is better. Let's calculate ROI. As a reminder, you can use this formula right here, net operating income divided by average operating assets, or you can separately determine your margin, so your operating income margin, probably a percentage, and separately compute your turnover which is an activity measure, sales versus op average operating assets. And then finally, ROI is margin times turnover. You can do it either way. We're actually going to do both right now. So the scenario here, we have sales revenue of 500 grand for this particular year. Net operating income is 30 grand. Operating assets at the beginning of the year, 100 grand. At the end of the year, operating assets were 300,000. So we can see that the company did invest some money in infrastructure. And we wanna know what is the ROI. First thing we need to do is we need to figure out the average operating assets. And I guess I'll do that over here. Average operating assets 
remember is going to be beginning plus ending divided by two. So we've got 100,000 right here at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, it's 300,000. Divide that by two. The average is going to be $200,000. From there, uh, this is the way I typically do the calculation. I will just take the operating income, which is $30,000, divided by those average operating assets that we calculated from above, the 200,000, and you get 15%. Now, that's, that's a quick way to do it. Another way you can do it, you could figure out your margin. So your margin is going to be $30,000 of operating income divided by that 500,000 of sales revenue. So what we're really doing with margin is we're saying um, how many pennies, essentially, for, for every dollar of sales revenue, how many pennies of profit did you generate? And then with the turnover, what you're essentially doing here is generating an activity measure. So we generated 500,000 of sales revenue by using 200,000 of dollars of investment in our infrastructure. So in other words, sales revenue was two and a half times greater than our investment in infrastructure. Our ROI is margin times turnover. So what you have here, 6% times two and a half gives us 15%. Always nice when you do a double check, things work out. As a reminder, the reason this kind of works out is because these two cancel each other out. When you multiply margin times turnover, what you're ultimately doing is you're, you're generating a calculation like this. ROI helps us evaluate potential investments. Remember, bigger is better. We calculated the ROI as 15% in this scenario just a moment ago. What if we modify that? What if, what if management is considering a piece of equipment that would increase the average operating assets from 200,000 to 230? So the average operating assets go from two to 230. Now what's gonna to happen to profitability? Well, sales revenue is gonna go up by 35,000, but you have to spend money to make money. Expenses go up by 15. Last time I checked, that's an expected increase in overall profit of $20,000. Let's look at what that does to ROI. The operating income used to be 30,000. Now it's gonna be 20,000 bigger, 20,000 bigger, right? Because this gets added. So we've got a new RO, we've got a new operating income of $50,000. The new ROI is going to be that operating income. And think about it, the R, return. That income is your return. And what's your investment? Well, now the average investment is $230,000. What's your return on that investment? In this case, it's 21.7% or 21.7 cents for every dollar. And the last thing to think about is, remember, the, uh, the old ROI, I'll just label it as before, was 15%. So if you are a manager who is evaluated based upon ROI and you're presented with a decision that has the potential to bring your ROI from 15% to 22% roughly, I think you already know what that manager will do. ROI is a terrific tool, but there could be situations where a manager might make a decision that would reduce ROI, but would actually be beneficial for the company as a whole. So sometimes this limitation of ROI leads us to something called residual income. Residual income is an alternate measure that might, uh, it might motivate managers to make decisions that will benefit the company even if ROI would go down. So it's an alternate measure of performance for managers of a company. 
The formula is not very difficult. You take your actual operating income and then you subtract a required rate of return or required, re required return. So let me just best illustrate it with an example. Let's pretend that our required rate of return is 20%. That's what the company would like to get. And our average operating assets in this example are $100,000. So that means that if we invest $100,000 in operating assets, the company would like to get a return of at least $20,000. If our current operating income is 30 grand and the required return is $20,000, then your residual income is $10,000. And what we can do then, if we want to, we could, motive, we could compensate, evaluate our management based upon residual income. If they make a decision that increases residual income, then automatically what they'll be doing is they'll, making a, they'll be making a decision that gives a return that is greater than 20%. So some companies choose to use residual income as an alternate to ROI. Even though residual income has a significant advantage over ROI, or at least could be more desirable. Uh, it has a major limitation, and it's just this right here. It can't be used to compare divisions of different sizes. Look at a company with a retail division and a wholesale division. If the company's re required rate of return is 20%, then the retail division, which is much smaller than wholesale, has $100,000 in average operating assets, the minimum required return would be 20 grand. The wholesale division has a million dollars in operating assets. It's 10 times larger than the retail division. And so we would expect that the required rate of return is also 10 times greater. If we were to compare here actual operating income, if we see that the retail division has an operating income of $30,000, and the wholesale division has an operating income of $220,000, well then, the residual here is 10,000 bucks. The residual for the wholesale division is $20,000. On the surface, if you simply compare residual income, you would take a look, and I, I know my zero might be cut off there, not sure if it is, but you'd take a look at the wholesale division and you would say, oh, it's twice as good as the retail division because its residual income is double. Well, the residual income is double, but you know the adage about work smarter, not harder? Keep that in mind as we look at what's going on here. Residual income is double. 20,000 is definitely twice the amount of 10,000. But how much harder did we have to work to get that extra income? What investment in assets? We had to invest an extra $900,000 in operating assets to tie those dollars up in operating assets in order to get that extra residual income. The only reason that the residual income is greater for the wholesale division is because the wholesale division is bigger than the retail division. So you have to exercise some caution when you're comparing residual income among or between divisions that are differing sizes.